Make sure to stand till the end. If you do one simple mistake, if you make one simple mistake, you can destroy your engine and you may need the engine replaced or rebuilt. Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. Today will be super helpful video to any of you guys having a Dodge Challenger and if you need to remove or replace ignition coil, stay with us. We will explain how to do that step by step. Uh, three of the ignition coils are accessible without taking almost anything apart, but three of them you will have to do some work. And if you don't do things right, you can actually destroy your engine. We will explain why, so make sure you stay until the end. We will cover all that in this video today. So before we start, let me tell you a little bit about us. Every single car we get here in the garage, guys, we try to make at least two to 300 free repair videos. Why we do that? Because our mission in the shop is to save you as much money as we can. Oh, and it in return, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Uh, if you need to buy any parts, tools for your Dodge Challenger or any car, you want to save quite a bit of money, get them at a really good price and quick shipping, check out the link in the description of the video below. That's where we get all our tools and supplies from. So let's start on it now. So what do we have here now? This is guys a Dodge Challenger 2018 V6 but even if you have um, a different year with a 3.6 engine it will work as well. Usually your engine will have the engine cover on top as well right here. Stay with us we'll explain uh, how to get to that point and once you remove the upper intake manifold you will get to right here and we'll explain uh, how it can actually uh, destroy your engine too so uh, let's go ahead start on the intake manifold remover and then we'll continue with the next step so first we're going to remove the upper engine cover you grab and you pull straight up it has four rubber bushings one two three four they attach right here to these posts as you can see like that and you have one towards the back so it just comes straight out next we're going to remove the intake Holes. okay right here you can see it has only one hose clamp with eight millimeter that we're going to pre-loosen so let's go ahead do that now perfect we're going to come on this side first okay we're going to go ahead pre-loosen that one and I'm going to disconnect the intake temperature sensor here okay and we can grab that hose pull it out Right here it has one rubber bushing that you need to pull straight up. You cannot just wiggle it all the time, you just have to pull straight up and pull the rubber bushing out of here. Now the car battery should be disconnected because uh, you'll be closer okay, to electrical connections, disconnecting things and on these modern cars it really matters which battery terminal you disconnect and reconnect first if you do it the wrong way. You can burn the engine computer electronics modules that can cost you thousands of dollars. So we have a special video that explains which battery terminal to disconnect first. Now we have a few okay, clips that we're going to pry out of here. Okay, that's great. And then we're going to go ahead and start disconnecting wires here okay that's for the throttle body press here okay push in release the pressure pull out and that wire will come out as well so we kind of like need to remember where they need to go later perfect now this is a map sensor right there we need to disconnect that one as well so Let's go ahead and do that. We have one vacuum hose, careful not to break it, it's super easy if you do. You will guys need to replace the intake manifold and that could be pricey. So, this one came out too. Perfect. We're going to have one wiring harness. Let's see what else we have here. We might need to move some later here. Okay, that wire I wonder. Okay, that hose needs to come out. This is from the PCV valve. Okay, that mount will stay here, so we'll just need to uh, remove that nut there now. So there are a few things, guys, as you can see. The engine started looking more appealing now. We can see more things. So that can definitely help us. So 10 millimeters, careful not to drop the nut, perfect, one is out. Next, okay, let's 
analyze everywhere. Here we have one mount, another 10 millimeter right here, which is actually kind of like hidden, so we need to get the ratchet. Okay, it's right there, that nut. Hard to access, so we'll need to do by hand or with a wrench. And uh, this is holding the upper intake manifold. You need to remove that upper intake manifold for multiple repairs. Anything such as spark works on cylinder 2, 4 and 6. Ignition coils on cylinder 2, 4 and 6. If you need to uh, remove or replace fuel injectors. If you need to remove and replace knock sensors. Uh, coolant temperature sensor, oil pressure sensor, oil temperature sensor. You also guys have uh, the oil cooler which is a uh, weak spot on those. And okay. One more nut there, this one only with a wrench. Okay, that oil cooler, the gaskets are a weak spot. What happens, uh, it develops uh, leaks. It can develop coolant and oil leak and it can even mix oil and coolant and that could be practically, guys, catastrophic. Uh, we have a link, okay. Uh, to where we can buy new cool, uh, oil cooler. Uh, you can check out the video on Pentastar 3.6 engine. This is known as the Pentastar engine. Perfect, we should be ready on this side. So now we're going to go ahead, start with eight millimeter and we'll need to start pretty from both. No, it's not going to work probably there. We need to get a longer extension because we don't want to risk damaging the intake manifold. So bolt number five, bolt number six now. Okay, and we should probably here yeah. More now, yep, right there, seven. And we have bolt number, let me see if we have one more somewhere here. I just want to analyze to see. We do have one somewhere, somewhere else. Let me see now. So there is one more bolt, guys, right there. Uh, one more nut, excuse me. Now we need to remove those studs, uh, or whatever you call those things. Okay, the bolts that hold the nuts. So we're going to go ahead, grab that here. Okay, let's see if this one works. This one is super tight, I cannot do it with one hand. Let's see if it's going to fit there. We're talking about this right there and the next one because otherwise we will not be able to remove the intake manifold okay it's okay it may not work we'll s no because it has a washer on the back side and it puts back pressure on the plastic manifold so don't do that you can damage it that way this is exactly the same on this side so let's analyze and see the best way to do that is to remove that mount right here. Okay, and let's see where we have, okay, bolts for these mounts or these two on this side. These ones, they have only one bolt from what I can see down there on each mount. So let's see which one we need to do. So now, I will try without removing them, get a prime tube, but if you pry too hard, you can break your intake manifold. So you have to be extremely careful. If not, we will recommend to remove the mount. Okay, I'm almost, almost out. But you can see just a little bit holding there. Yep, almost out of there. Let me see if we can just maybe even remove one of them they put those brackets and it fixes everything in place which makes it really inconvenient but we can easily probably push them and okay 
Uh, okay, this one came out. This one's out. This one's out there too. So that will do it, guys. We don't need to remove. But you have to be careful not to break your. Okay, now common mistakes people make here. One second, one second, one second. Okay, you drop something there inside, you don't see it. Or even if you see it, sometimes you may have a really hard time removing it. What will happen? Goes in the engine, uh, you start it, hits valve, piston, cylinder, and you can say bye bye to your engine, guys, and you need the engine rebuilt or replaced after that. So uh, be extremely careful, and uh, I recommend to cover these holes that way. Uh, you can minimize the chance for dropping something in the intake uh, uh, manifold. Now, let me show you something quick. These gaskets need to be replaced every time you remove it. We'll put a link where you can get intake manifold gasket for the 3.6 engine. So check it out and uh, you will be able to do that. Uh, because otherwise, guys, okay, you can develop a vacuum leak. You have an unstable vehicle operation, rough idle, vacuum leak, cold, lean fuel mixture code something that will be super hard to fix so intake manifold has been removed as we said if you drop something right here you can say bye bye to your engine because if you don't drop it you don't notice to take it out it will go in the valves you can bend the valve destroy a piston cinder, uh, cinder head block you can practically destroy your engine all the way guys uh, now uh, you have three ignition codes that are usually very accessible without even removing the upper intake manifold but these three are not if you need to know the cylinder numbers and ignition code numbers we'll share that with you now so uh, most people think that this is cylinder one two and three that's wrong you start on this side cylinder one two three four five six so those are the six cylinders let's say you have bad ignition cone cylinder number uh, four you will need to remove that one uh, so we can go ahead and show you how to do that on just one ignition cone you can see never pull on the wires when you disconnect it grab the connector push it in disconnect that red thing by pulling it to the back now you grab right there and pull for the connector only do not pull on the wires because you can yank them out of the connector you will lose communication you get an engine light and code related to ignition coil you get a 10 millimeter socket uh, uh, eight excuse me eight millimeter well this is a 10 i'm right yep this is eight millimeter uh, a 10 millimeter here with red on eight and we'll go ahead remove that bolt perfect we are going to go ahead pull the bolt out okay let me show you it's still not unscrewed all the way that's the bolt okay we grab the coil it might be stuck on the spark plug because it has that seal that prevents water to get in the engine uh, in the spark plug and you can see guys that's where your spark plug is located that's how we remove ignition coil putting it together it's practically in reverse order we took it apart hopefully guys the video will be helpful thank you for watching and see you next time